A short while ago I did a video about the updated Electron Plus 2 from Dave Hitchens. Just before publishing it I showed it to Dave to see if he could save me from any glaring mistakes. He didn't find any but he did have a couple of comments which I thought were best covered as a follow up, which is what you've got today. So the first thing Dave mentioned was about the AP5 and uh, the tube interface on that clashing with the internal Pi tube direct on the plus two. Um, and the other thing Dave mentioned was about using the external power brick with the plus two and the power consumption on the electron in general. Um, but we're going to start off by having a look at the AP5. In the original video I said that plugging in an AP5 stopped the internal Pi tube direct adapter in the plus two from working, presumably because it clashed with the tube interface on the AP5, so it probably wasn't a good idea to use them together. You can, however, disable the internal Pi tube direct with the jumper on the adapter board, or even remove it completely, and then attach an external tube processor to the AP5, and it works just fine. One problem, however, is you can't easily remove or disable the Pi tube direct adapter in the Plus 2 when the cover is on, so you can't chop and change quickly. As for the 1MHz bus interface on the AP5, I didn't test that because I couldn't find my Pi 1MHz and was too embarrassed to admit it. After I finished the video, however, I found it on my desk, hiding underneath a Commodore 128D power supply. Connecting this up to the new AP5, along with the external Pi tube and the Plus 2's internal Pi tube adapter disabled, everything is working fine. I get a tube processor and a virtual SCSI hard disk with ADFS. So it's a bit annoying to lose the internal functionality of the Pi Tube Direct, um, but the main reason why I used the AP5 was because I was running out of slots and I was trying to compress as much functionality onto one cartridge as possible. But with the Plus 2 that problem's mostly gone away. Um, so I can still use the AP5 if I want, but I can also just use the internal Pi Tube Direct to make up the functionality I was getting on the AP5 with more cartridges, as now I've got lots more slots to play with. Whilst I'm here, in the AP5 video I compared various versions of ADFS and said that I was using a special build of 1.30 to get the floppy drive access and star compact cursor bugs fixed, as well as hard disk support. Well, since then I found out the code for this build for the Electron is taken directly from the Acorn 1.00 version, so it probably still has the floppy drive bug, so I need to do some more digging on this. Right, now let's look at the optional power supply input on the left side of the Plus 2, and those jumpers J4 and J5. It's important to note that the jumpers don't affect how the Plus 2 itself is powered. That always comes from the Electron. The jumpers just control how anything plugged into the back of it is powered, for example a daisy chain Plus 1. If J4 is set, the Plus 2 and the daisy chain device will be powered using the supply provided by the Electron over the expansion connector. On the other hand, if J5 is set, the Plus 2 itself will still use the Electron's power, but the connected device will be powered from the supply input on the side of the Plus 2, reducing load on the main Electron power supply. This means that, if you do have J5 set but don't have the Plus 2 power supply connected, this is fine as long as you only have the Plus 2 itself attached. But, if you then connect your Plus 1 and forget to connect the extra power, your Electron will likely not start up, which can be very worrying. Connect the plus 2 power supply, however, and everything will be fine again. So when should you use the additional power supply input on the plus 2? Well, the standard electron power supply is rated up to 14 watts at 19 volts AC. Although I'm using a more modern 19 volt DC laptop power supply that can provide up to 1.58 amps, which is more like 30 watts. The reason why I'm using a modern supply is not because of a fault with the original one, but just because it's a bit chonky and stops me using the adjacent sockets on a power strip. So that raises the question of how much power does the Electron actually use. First, let's have a look at the power supply system. We have the obvious external brick, which just steps the AC voltage down from 240 volts mains to 19 volts. But then inside the Electron there's also a switch mode power supply that converts the 19 volts AC to DC with plus 5, minus 5 and 0 volts, which is then fed to the main board. To measure the output of the external brick, I'm going to use my GCSE knowledge of electricity. If I measure the volts and amps with a couple of multimeters, I can multiply them together to get the watts. Volts are easy to measure as you can just attach the two probes somewhere onto the positive and negative wires. Amps, however, are slightly more tricky, as all the current needs to flow through the multimeter to be measured, so I need to find some way to insert it into the circuit. To do this, I've made up this little cable to sit between the power brick and the electron, 
For the amps, I'll put the meter on the right in series with one of the wires. This is being used with the original 19 volt AC power supply, so we'll need to measure AC current. To get the volts, I can put the meter on the left across the two wires, setting it to measure AC voltage. To measure the 19 volt DC from the laptop power supply, I would just change the meters to DC amps and volts, but they attach to the same places. I also want to measure the power on the 5 volt feed from the internal power supply into the mainboard, so I've made up a similar cable to sit in line there. I'm going to ignore the negative 5 volts as it's only used for the cassette interface. And finally, for completeness, and to check the efficiency of the power supply system, I'm going to measure the draw from the mains with one of these plug-in power meters and switch it to display watts. So, I don't have four multimeters, but I do have a couple of oscilloscopes that I can use as glorified voltmeters. Note that I can't use two inputs on the same scope as the neutral input on the internal power supply is not directly connected to the 0 volts output from it, and connecting them both to the same scope would short them together. So, let's cross our fingers, turn things on, and see what we get. The mains is providing 6.3 watts. The external Acorn AC power supply is providing around 20.64 volts at 0.324 amps. And the internal power supply is outputting 5.1 volts at 0.65 amps. So, we can put those numbers into a spreadsheet, which, aside from giving me the wonderful feeling of being at work, tells us that the external power supply unit is putting out 6.687 watts, and the internal power supply unit is putting out 3.315 watts, giving us an efficiency of the internal power supply of 49.6%. I'm ignoring the mains wattage as that reads lower than the power being output by the power brick, and I trust my multimeters more than that plug-in mains meter thing. We can now flip the keyboard over and attach a new plus one with no cartridges in it, and repeat the test. And we can keep going to do all the different configurations. We can then swap in the 19 volt DC laptop power supply, not forgetting to change the ammeter and voltmeter to measure DC instead of AC, and then repeat all the tests to get a comparison with the standard Acorn one. And there we are. So some things to note. The DC laptop power supply seems to draw very slightly less power from the mains than the AC Acorn one, but has to supply a lot less to the internal power supply for it to provide the same amount of power to the main board. I think that means that the external DC power supply is less efficient at converting from the mains, but the internal power supply is more efficient when fed with a DC supply. Neither of the power supplies exceeded the 14 watt maximum for the Acorn power supply, however, although I haven't got any cartridges in there at the moment. So let's load things up with a Prez AP34 floppy drive card and two 16K sideways RAM card in the plus one, and an Elk Econet interface and an Elk SD plus one SD card adapter in the plus two, and then measure things again. Right, so I've added a row for the system fully loaded with cartridges. The Acorn AC power supply is now outputting 16.604 watts, which is over its rated 14 watt maximum and the laptop DC power supply is providing 13.54 watts, although it is rated up to 1.58 amps, which should be up to 30 watts, so it's below half its maximum. I'm still suspicious about that mains wattage though, so I've added another column giving the ratio of mains power to that supplied by the external power supply. For the DC supply, the efficiency is 75 to 84%, which is exactly the range listed for a switch mode power supply according to Wikipedia. The AC power supply is sometimes showing an efficiency of 100% however, which does seem a bit wrong. Someone with actual knowledge of electronics can probably explain that in the comments, but the main thing we're interested in here today is the Acorn AC power supply going over 14 watts, which it does on a fully loaded plus one and plus two system. So let's move that jumper in the plus two from J4 to J5, connect up that external power supply and see what a difference that makes. Back to the spreadsheet and I've added some extra rows and columns. The first of the extra rows show the load when using the plus two power supply and just cartridges in the plus one. The load on the electrons external power supply is very similar to when only the plus two is connected as the extra power supply will be powering the plus one and everything in it. The second set of extra rows are for a fully loaded system, same as we looked at earlier, but with the extra plus two power supply. Here, the load on the electrons power supply is about 2.5 watts lower, taking us under the 14 watt limit of the original model.
The final set of extra rows are where I've swapped the floppy interface in the Plus One for a new AP5 and Pi 3B Plus PiTube Direct coprocessor, both with and without the Plus Two power supply. You can see the power goes well over the 14 watt maximum when just using the Electron power supply, and almost to 15 watts when using the Acorn power supply, even with the extra Plus Two feed. The first block of extra columns show the volts, amps and watts from the output of the external Plus Two supply. And the final column shows this added to the Electron's external power supply output, giving us a figure to compare with the load on that when it was supplying everything. I think that it's half a watt to a watt lower probably points at the improved efficiency of the modern power regulator in the Plus 2 over the Electron's 40-year-old one. More to the point, the whole reason for all this messing about was to find out when to use the extra power supply with the Plus 2, and I can say that in both cases, when testing the fully loaded systems with just the Electron power supply, both the original Acon one and the laptop one, I had fairly frequent moments when the display blanked out, although I never actually had a crash. So I think those situations are worth avoiding, and it's probably best using it all the time with the Plus 2, unless you're leaving at least a couple of cartridge slots free, but certainly with an AP5. I think, given that the blanking occurs with both the Acorn and laptop power supplies, and the laptop one can provide 30 watts, the issue here is probably more the internal electron power supply, which is having to provide over 8.5 watts. It seems fine with a 7.5 watt load, so it probably has a limit of somewhere around 8 watts. Whilst I've got all this stuff out, we might as well swap things for my original Plus One with the AP6 version 2 fitted inside and measure that as well, both on its own and with an Elk Econet and new AP5 with Pi 3B Plus coprocessor fitted. So I haven't had any trouble with either power supply in this configuration, even though the Acorn power supply is providing nearly 15 watts in the full configuration, the internal one is only providing just over 7.5 watts and seems okay. Perhaps using the extra headroom in the 30 watt laptop power supply is a good idea here anyway though. Okay, so this seems like a good time to stop. I think I've covered all the different combinations of expansions and power supplies. Um, I've also got nearly five minutes of spreadsheet time uh, in this video, so it's probably the least interesting one I've ever made. Um, I'm also keen to uh, tidy things away and get my desk back, and I'm also really worried about reversing my chair into this and blowing everything up. Um, but if you know how I've got the electronics wrong or you want to leave a suggestion or a correction, then please do leave a comment below. Um, but if you do have an electron um, with a plus one or a plus two, I hope you found that interesting and maybe even enjoyable, and see you next time.